But what about Bowen? Now, Bowen is saying he's giving, I quote his words, quote, giving Australians better access to options which allow them to never lift the, mo- the nozzle on a petrol pump again. Now, we don't want to be uncharitable, Judith, but that's simply not the truth. Are the electorate fooled by this stuff? Well, I think just there are so many complications. So, um, of course, another really important point is that the subsidies are highly regressive because in Australia in particular, I mean, the cost of an electric vehicle is considerably more than a petrol vehicle, right? Um, So basically governments are handing out money for people on higher incomes. So that's generally not what we like to do. But here's the point. A lot of people with electric vehicles will have a second vehicle. So they have an ordinary vehicle. So in the event of them wanting to go any distance, they'll use that because um, it can be a complete nightmare trying to find appropriate charging stations and available charging stations if you want to go for any length of time. They're fine to, you know, uh, flit around the, the city, generally speaking. And if you have a garage and three-phase power, you can charge it at home, right? But actually most people, and this is one of the issues, for example, in the UK, uh, as you will know, about two-thirds of households do not have a garage, right, yeah. because, you know, they live in terrace houses, right? So they can't charge their electric vehicles from home. And there's been a complete brouhaha because people are getting out their extension cords and running it over the footpath to try and charge up their cars. Now, that actually is very unsafe for a variety of reasons. <laughs> um, but people, you know... you know, it, It's it, just madness. The point, See, the vibe, the vibe doesn't kind of take into account the practicalities and there are an awful lot of practicalities associated with rolling yeah. out electric vehicles. Well, let's just come, let's come to China, because China got to be laughing at us, haven't they? I mean, they've cornered the market, and you've made this point in a brilliant piece you wrote recently. Firstly, they've cornered the market on solar panels. And now, as you say, they now want to corner the market on electric vehicle batteries. Over 90% of all battery production at the moment is in China. Now, we've been down this track before but we seem to have learnt nothing because the Chinese companies are trying to lock up the supply. And you've made this point, and I've made it before, of the vital elements of batteries, lithium and cobalt and copper and all that stuff. So, Judith, what's the potential for China leaving us stranded by, via some retaliatory behaviour? Yes, and I mean, it's not just the batteries that they want to lock up. It's actually electric vehicle manufacturers as well. But as you say they are emissions intensive to produce and they basically are using coal-fired power. And I don't know if you've noticed recently, but there's been some reports that China's sort of actually at the point of accelerating its construction of more coal-fired power stations yes, because yep. they don't want to be caught short of, of power in any way. Mm-hmm. So um, they'll say one thing on the international stage, but... Uh, there, there is, I think, a, a, a reality going on. I mean, Britain, again, mentioning Boris Johnson, who was a, a lovely guy in many ways, but an absolutely hopeless prime minister. <laughs> um, he, you know, had this great vision for some major battery factory in Britain. I think it was called going to be called Brit Batteries. It was somewhere up in Northumberland or something. And it, you know, the trouble is you cannot compete against the Chinese with that sort of thing. And mm. as you say, unless you've locked up the the uh, mineral component of them, um, you're in real trouble. Mm. 